Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Genesis Mindset. And once again, I'd just love to express my gratitude to everyone who's been commenting, everyone who's been liking, everybody who's been giving me feedback and sharing information and trying to connect with me and reach out with me. Uh, it's been really an explosive and exciting week. I've been full of energy. I've been full of just being in the flow. So many things are really expanding in my life, both inside crypto and out of crypto more importantly. So thank you very much, everybody. And again, this week, it's actually making me mindful about the kind of content that I'm delivering. So in this episode today, I'm going to be talking about a trope of going to zero because we've had a huge dip. And I know, I just know there's going to be fear in the market. People are going to be fearing because they would have also been buying. So let's get straight into it. So I'm going to get into the presentation here. So obviously, welcome to the Genesis Mindset. As always, this is Mindset for Trading investing in life. And this is not financial advice. I really need to stress that. Do not buy things based on what I tell you. Do not do anything based on what I tell you, except meditate. That's the only thing that I will say. You should meditate. You should definitely meditate. You should clear your mind and you should become one with the universe. That's the only thing I will tell you that you definitely should try doing. Buying, selling, whatever you do with cryptocurrency, do not take anything that I say as gospel. Take it with a grain of salt. So, Today, obviously, we will be covering the fact that Pulse Chain is pumping. And this is something that is fantastic, actually. Pulse Chain is pumping. In the last two last few videos, I was saying Pulse Chain will pump. Now we've actually got evidence that Pulse Chain is pumping. But is a trope going to go to zero? That whole ecosystem is dipping down. So what are we actually going to cover today? So first of all, I'm going to cover some key things about mindset. As you know, I'm all about meditation and mindset. So this is going to be very important. So please pay attention to this. This is something that I feel is going to be very useful to everybody. Then the pulse chain to a tropa relationship. So just having a look at the macro perspective in the pulse chain ecosystem. And then, of course, the atropa risks. So at the moment, as my mind has been exploding with all this information, I've only just been covering all the good things about atropa. And it's really just been feeding my mind. And I've had all this energy. And it's like I'm just pulling in all these things from the universe that's directing me in this particular way, which is why I have conviction in what I'm doing. However, I do want to be objective. I do want to highlight the risks because I think that is very, very important. And then I just want to quickly talk about the future of this channel because I have had people reach out to me. So I want to just be clear on a number of things. Okay, so mindset. The key mindset that I always try to have is I know nothing. So <laughs> this is, again, this is what I love about Somi, Somi, your friend Somi, peanut brain. He's a peanut brain. So I think this is such a big, it's such a it's such a big mind to have that kind of perspective, that kind of humble mind to say that I really know nothing and just being grateful to the world. So despite the fact that I have been known to wear checkered shirts, I have never had a pen in front in my front pocket. So you should never, ever listen to what I say as like this guy knows what he's talking about just because he's on the Internet. And you should take that perspective with everything that you see on the Internet. So please, you have to be mindful of your own perspective. Because at the end of the day, I love this quote, we're all standing on the shoulders of giants. So everything that I know is thanks to all the people before me and the people before them and the people before them. So all I'm doing is accumulating all this information, spending these hours and hours in research and then delivering it to you from my perspective. So please be mindful of that, that I have this mindset of I know nothing, which allows me to have an open mind and an open heart that I can accept everything from the world. But also, I really need to be objective about how I deliver things. Okay, and this one, I think, is going to be very important because I get a sense that potentially in the future, this is something that I've seen Corey Costa talk about, and I really want to emphasize this. And it's not, not necessarily just to cover me. It's for your benefit. The only person that's responsible is you. You are responsible for your own mind. So don't ever base, don't ever trade based on what I'm telling you, because I'm about mindset. And one of the most powerful mindsets you can have is to have this mindset that everything is my fault. Don't blame anyone. Don't blame the world. That's this, the victim mind, the egoic mind is one of the lowest forms of mind that you can have. I spent my life stuck in that mindset. And do you know how far I got in life? I got nowhere. Sure, I got an architecture degree. I ended up getting married and all those kind of things, but I was still very much useless. I was very diligent in my architecture degree, but really I was still 
on reflection, I was useless. I was never really going to truly make it because I had this victim mindset that everything else is somebody else's fault. But through meditation, I've truly learned through self-reflection by really seeing in my mind, by clearing away all that picture world in my mind, I've been able to see oh, everything is my fault. Because I have that mind, I actually attract those conditions into my life. And if I play the victim, I just keep attracting more of those conditions into my life because the universe actually wants us to be free from this false mind world. So it's going to continue to attract into us what we have in our mind. But we need to be free from this prison in our mind because you're always going to stay in that low vibration. If you continue to have that kind of a mindset, you're giving all your power away by blaming the world when things don't go your way, when you make an investment because somebody said this on a YouTube video and then you turn around for someone to blame. Don't ever do that. I know that there's going to be people that do it because that we're all prisoners of our mind. But I'm going to warn you right now that you need to learn that everything is my fault. And the best way to do this is to reflect and learn the method for discarding the mind so you yourself can see the truth, the fundamental truth of that statement. Okay, all right. So now that the mindset is out of the way, let's get into the risks of a tropa. So never forget the basics of the Richard Hart ecosystem, the whole ethos that we try and emphasize. So in relation to in relation to the Atropa ecosystem, is the code audited? No. Does it have admin keys? We don't even know if it has admin keys. What we do know is that it has been renounced. So the Atropa contract was recently renounced. What this means is now there is no owner. So prior to this, there was an owner that could do anything to the contract. Now there is no owner of the contract. But what we don't know is whether or not that contract is still trustworthy. That's something we don't actually know. But what you can do if you want to do a little bit of digging for yourself, you can go to verifypulse.com or Pulse Police in Telegram. So you can get people to verify it for you. But at the end of the day, a lot of this has to do with the 414 wallet. And so Walrus is a very trusted community member of Liquid Loans. And I asked him this question and he said, basically, I asked him how it can be verified or if it's audited. And he said, nothing on chain will, basically, will show you that. So to trust that it's verified, you need to see the report or have the auditor to confirm. So we don't actually know if any of this is audited. Does it matter to you? That's up to you. That's for you to make that decision. But know that risk because that is a risk that we have. So on that, I want to just now quickly share this. Where is my other screen? Here we go. So I'm just going to zip over to here. So on Verify Pulse. So for example, the sense. So B Roots is starting to pump this sense. And I'm mindful of saying these things because but he's now added this to his list. So straight away, you can go to verifypulse.com. You can copy and paste the contract into here and it will spit this out. So this token appears to be unsellable at the moment. They all seem to be saying that. The contract has been verified and the ownership has been renounced. So this is good. So it's giving these thumbs up, but then there's a, these alerts for this for the issue. So it doesn't have adequate liquidity. It's considered low. Now, the other thing that people have asked, how do you verify if it's a 414 wallet? So I will go to something like scan.pulsechain.com. And again, I'll copy and paste that code into this search here. I don't know if you can see it because of my little head there or my big head rather. And this particular contract, once you do the search, you'll see that the creator is not the 414 wallet. So take it with a grain of salt, whether you want to trust it. I'm not saying don't trust it. I'm not saying do trust it. I'm just presenting to you objectively what is actually happening in this ecosystem and what you need to be mindful of if you want to assess the risks for yourself. Okay, now back to the presentation. So the next risk, it can go to zero. There is a, There are risks associated with all crypto. So for example, Bitcoin, uh, BitConnect went to zero, essentially. It required endless pumping. It was a one-way street. It was a Ponzi scheme. So I'm not too sure that's the case with a tropa from what I'm seeing. I don't, I don't believe that's the case from what I'm hearing, from what I'm seeing, from what I'm feeling. I don't believe, and the community consensus also doesn't believe that that is the case with this. The difference with this is there's so many different tokens that are being created in this network that seem to provide some kind of algorithmic sym symphony between buying and selling and burning and minting that stabilizes everything and keeps it and upholds it and keeps it moving forward. Whereas BitConnect is just a linear trajectory. This is an, is an equilibrium of coexi a coexisting community. So keep that in mind as well. This can always go to zero. Never forget that. So only invest what you're, what you're willing to lose. Now, this 
doesn't seem to work with liquidity, without liquidity rather. So just like anything, if there's no market, there's no nutrients. So this is always going to be a problem. So with that said, let's actually get into the macro of Pulse Chain at the moment. So I'm going to start to bring up some charts here. Let's just bring this back up, this window. Okay, a trope at a pulse. So let's take a look at this. So I've actually added this line here. So here we've got pulse chain to die. And I've added this line here. This is basically, let's say this is where Atropa was created. Now, as I showed in the last video, as pulse chain is going down, Atropa is going up. As pulse chain is going up, Atropa is going down. As pulse chain is going down, Atropa is going up. As pulse chain is going up, Atropa is going down. So we can see this relationship. The interesting thing that I'm observing here is the warning sign here. Okay, so the good thing that I'm seeing here is there's higher lows. There's higher lows. So is this heart's law in motion? So in the previous video, I was hoping for a, for uh, an extreme low of around tier, um, according to Axis Alive's Fibonacci levels. I was really hoping for this. It still is possible. We have this huge trend line, so it's going to have to break out of this massive trend line with conviction. I'm not sure if it will. It might just trickle up. It might bounce down. It might kind of go sideways for a little bit. This also might go sideways for a little bit because it's gone ballistic for the last, you know, for the last month or two. Nobody knows what's actually going to happen. So I'm kind of hoping it kind of ticks around here, but then has a nice, beautiful, sweet little drop down to here after something happens with the SEC case with Richard Hart in November. That's what I'm hoping. So I can scoop up more extremely cheap pulse chain because I think. I mean, if not, these are the last chances I have been scooping up at these lows because I'm. this is way better than the sacrifice rate that I was getting. So instead of complaining, I'm being grateful to the universe for providing these conditions and actually just taking it with open arms because my convictions haven't changed. So again, with these higher lows, why I've drawn this line here, if, whoops, if we would see here, if a tropa went all the way below this line here, then we could say, oh, this ratcheting effect is a disaster. It's not actually working, but we're seeing higher lows. Get out of the way. We're seeing higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. So they're lifting each other up. Let's see how long this continues for. This is something that I'm very excited about. I'm still very excited about this. And my energy towards it is really telling me that there is something to this. Okay, so now that's the overall market scale. So again, this, this could go to zero, but the very fact that it hasn't dumped all the way down here, because if we saw Pulse Chain gum all the way past this point and then a tropa drop all the way down past this point, we'll, we, then we can say, all right, all the liquidity from here has disappeared and gone back into Pulse Chain and this is going to go to zero, but we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that. We're seeing a very healthy distance. Uh, we're seeing a very healthy distance between the two. So this has actually still got plenty of liquidity in it whilst this is going up. That's exactly what we want to see. So now if now hopefully the next move is, is going to be a bit of a dip here in Pulse Chain and then everything in the Atropa ecosystem is going to start to come back up. Okay. Now, back to the presentation. This one I promised to be less than 30 minutes because I've got a student that's coming in to meditate soon. So Atropa risks. Where do you actually sit in the market spectrum? This is something that you really need to reflect on and understand about yourself. So for me, I actually bought the top because I'm an extremely cautious person when it comes to these things. I want to do my research first and then I'm going to buy. Yes, I'm a degen also at heart, but I want to actually, I'm actually slow to buy once I, once I, when I'm in the process of working something out. Once I've worked it out, then my system falls into place. Then my strategy counteracts the slowness with which I get into it. Whereas if you look at people like B Roots who are in it from, you know, <laughs> day one you know these guys are like the true the true dgens these guys are like ultimate dgens and then you get people who really just take big risks they see something moving and they just throw money into it and they get into it nice and early where do you sit in that are you very cautious and if you are cautious if you looked at this and went oh should i buy and then didn't do anything about it and then a week later oh should i buy it still pumping and then a week later didn't do anything about it oh should i buy a week later then you are that person who's cautious, which means you're likely going to be buying a top, which means somebody's going to be dumping on you. So now I want to actually look at uh, Teddy Bear because you know I'm I'm not I'm still on the fence. I'm not too sure about this narrative of oh it's just going to keep pumping forever and it's going to have this this ridiculous pump that everything else 
in the history doesn't have. I think it's going to have the same pullbacks and the same uh, accumulation phases as everything else, but it's going to be perhaps more extreme, but I still think it's going to have the 50 to 90% dips. So this guy, he's one of my really, really good friends in real life and extremely small Twitter following is till 19, 1991. So he's one of my good friends, Jamie, and I've always loved his technical analysis, very simple technical analysis, but very on point. He always makes extremely good calls. So he says, good morning to the Pulse Chain fam. Recently, I noticed people are getting a bit of hopium on Teddy about having the next wave up. However, I'm here to put my two cents in and to say that Teddy will be dropped again against PLS. So FOMO on the next dip. And I actually completely agree. So now he's shown some lines here. So he's got some levels here where he's got the 0 0.00063. So this is against WPLS. And then he's shown this next low here is the 0 0.00034. And now again, he actually believes it's going to dip all the way down to these levels here. So the I'm just going to say 1555 5, 5, or 76667. 6, 6, so those are going to be about 90% drops from the top. And I'll be honest with you, I completely agree. So if I show you my charts, I'll show you what I've done. Let's move this over here so you can see. So this is when I started to, uh, I just wanted skin in the game. So I'm always, I always trade on the daily. I look at the daily, but then I hone into the four hour when I actually want to start putting in some buys. So here was my first buy just to get skin in the game because I didn't know at that stage if things were just going to keep going forever. So I thought, okay, I'm going to buy. And that was my skin in the game just to start to get an understanding of the ecosystem because now I'm invested in it so I can really have more, I can put more time and energy into it because I have, I have a reason to want to. Then my actual trading strategy of buying in threes. So my first buy... I'm going to consider this my first buy here was after I believe it had already dipped by 50%. So I took the opportunity after the 50% and put a buy in here. So I bought in from the top 30% from the top. Now there was another huge dip today, 70%. Okay. Just over 70%. I then put in another buy because Basically, I want to buy in stages of three. So I usually want to buy around the 20 to 30% mark. If it drops 50%, I want to put a buy in. If it's dropping 70%, I want to put another buy in. If it drops to 90%, that's going to be my final buy. I always try and do things in stages of three. So then my next 90% target is going to be around here. So if I see it getting to these this zone, I'm going to then put in my final buy. And then I sell according to however I feel. So I'll wait for it to take off, wait for it to potentially do you know, who knows, might not do a 30x. But if you look back, I mean, if you look back at Teddy, it's 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 done some pretty wild things. So, you know, it's done a, what's this, a 20x? Whereas, no, that's not a, I always get this confused. So is that a 400x or a 40x? So 43,000%. Let's have a look. So 43,000%. If this was 68%, holy shit, 43%. So hang on a minute. Oops. See, again, this is why you just take everything people say with a grain of salt. I am no expert. So this is, okay, so this is a double up. 100x is a double up. Therefore, wow, 45,000 is a 45x. All right. So, you know, I might wait for a 10x to start scaling out or at least take my initial out. Because again, this is all about accumulating my pulse. So yes, I bought pulse at these dips. But again, I want to keep stacking my pulse chain bag. That's, that's the end game for me. Okay. All right. Back to, the, back to the presentation, let's finish this up. So the future of this channel, I am not a shield channel. So I'm only showing to you objectively what I see, the things that I find fascinating, the things that I gravitate to, the things that my heart are attracted to, that's what I wanna share. And I've been humbled by the response that I've been getting. People have been reaching out to me, sharing things with me. Thank you to all those people. It's been amazing. I've been connecting, joining different communities. It's been beautiful. And that's what I really love. That's what I'm about, coexistence. I'm not here to shill any tokens. I'm not here to, don't come to me with a token and say, can you do a review on this? If I want to, maybe I'll look into it. But if somebody's reaching out to me to do a review on something, I'm already quite skeptical. I must admit, and I, and I do have an open mind and an accepting mind. I probably will take a look at it, but I might not actually end up doing it because I don't, I'm not here to shill anything and pump bags. I'm here just to present the things that I really am passionate about. And those are cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, and metaverse, because I'm all about bringing into this world 
the new world. So obviously as a meditation person, I'm all about everything is just one. We need to create this new world in order for everything to become one. There shouldn't be any divisions between worlds. There shouldn't be any divisions between countries or people. We need to actually become one world. So that happens first with the consciousness and then second with the world that's actually sprouting up around it. And I believe cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence and metaverse are part of that. Now, this this is something, again, which has fallen into my lap. This is a project called BTC Mobic, and I'm only just going to quickly talk about it just so you can at least have a think about it because this is something I'm very fascinated by. Again, I follow the world. When things just fall into my lap, I take that as a sign that the universe wants me to investigate this. This particular project serendipitously fell into my lap. So I'm very fascinated by it from that perspective. And I'm going to go into this in future episodes and I'm going to actually talk about it. But again, I'm not telling you to buy. I'm not telling you to sell. I'm just showing you, whoa. Okay, so this particular project, it's a fork of Bitcoin. And this is the price, obviously. So you can see the price here. This is in Korean won. So this originates from Korea. So they are, they are like, that's where, you know, cryptocurrency, they go bonkers for cryptocurrency there. Their, their culture is really about advancing the world. They're really tech and future minded. And so this is in Korean one. So it's gone from May to nothing in May, 2023. And it's in this bear market. It shot up to 250,000 won, which I believe is about, uh, I think 150 to 200 US dollars. So it's, it's really shot up. And this is something where honestly, I thought it's probably going to be a dump, but the community, the network effect that I'm seeing evolve around this particular token is something that I'm fascinated by. I'm fascinated by the social aspects of it, which is something that I want to actually cover. So again, I'm going to finish this up now. Thank you very much, everybody. So again, you can't really see these words, but thank you. Let's connect. Let's keep growing together. If you have things that you want to share with me, reach out to me. I'm on I have a website, coexistenstephen.com. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on TikTok. And of course, you can find me on Twitter at coexistenstephen. So let's finish up the episode. Thank you very much, everybody. I hope you found value in this and I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will be covering the liquidity pools that I have created. I'm waiting for them to mature a little bit. So I've got some data to present to you, but that will be coming up in future episodes. And also, because I'm also talking about artificial intelligence, I'm doing an artificial intelligence class tonight. So that episode will also be hosted on a different playlist on my channel. So if you are interested in artificial intelligence, you can check that out as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely night.